back to Coffee in Christ. I'm Joshua. He is Ron. You, as always, are loved by God. Let me tell you just a second about some things we have coming up. We're doing Coffee in Christ videos. We had the holidays, got away from that a little bit. Yeah. And now we're back doing it again. Every Thursday, we have Coffee in Christ commentary. And uh, we started a podcast called Gentleman and Scholar. And there's a lot of stuff going on that you can be involved with here at Salem Creek outside of this multimedia thing. And, and if you're looking for something to get involved with and how to serve God, I really hope that you'll come and be involved with that. But today, Ron, we're going to continue our conversation of Paul and how uh, we can look at his example and learn from his life. And one thing that we really don't think about a lot in modern America is this idea of suffering and suffering for the cause of Christ. We value our religious freedom and what a great blessing that is. Yeah. And none of us are really suffering for our faith to the degree that Paul did. He's just a tremendous example of that. You know, when Paul was called in Acts chapter 9, uh, Paul was, he saw Jesus, but God went to Ananias. And Ananias was kind of uh, apprehensive about going and, and seeing Paul. He and was scared Paul. of him. Yeah, absolutely. And for good reason. Paul had been persecuting the church. But in Acts chapter 9 and verse 15, God says, or Jesus rather says, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him, verse 16, how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. And he really did suffer. He, he did suffer. And in 2 Corinthians, he's uh, in chapter 11 addressing some people who are talking about their pedigree. And then he starts to talk about everything that he his experience through Christ. And between verses 23 and 27, he talks about everything that he suffered, how he'd been in labor. He'd been beaten more times than he could count. There were five occasions where he was given 39 lashes. That was by his Jewish brethren. He'd been beaten with rods. He had been stoned. He had been shipwrecked three times. He said he spent a night and a day in the deep. In other words, he was stranded in the ocean for a night and a day. When you go down to verse 26 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he uses the word dangers seven times hmm. to describe his experience. And what kept him going was this genuine love, not only for God and for, and for Jesus, but for the people of God, for the church. In Philippians chapter 3, I, I think you really get the key to, to Paul's life and why he was so faithful, why he was willing to endure anything. I want to read a few verses there. In, in verse 10 of chapter 3, he talks about his desire to know Jesus, the power of his resurrection, to get this, the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. In verse 12, He's talking about the resurrection. He says, not that I have already obtained to it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which I was also laid hold of by Christ Jesus. In verse 14, he talks about this upward call. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And so he's willing to go through anything for his Lord because his calling is, is always in the direction of heaven. And boy, what a great lesson for us that our calling is also heavenly and upward and that our minds, as Paul writes in Colossians, must be set on things above. And when you do that, I think you're able to go through whatever this life has in store for you. And if that is our goal, if, our, if we accept the fact that we've got an upward calling, that the things of this life don't really amount to much compared to that upward calling, there may be some times because of a commitment we've made to Jesus that we have to suffer. Maybe not exactly like Paul did, although we could at some point. Sure. And there are people in this world who do. Mm. May it be our lot. But if we are called upward toward God and we're pursuing that call, mm -hmm. we think nothing about making that sacrifice. Right. Well, I hope that you are having a good day and that you're able to set your mind on things above, to have that upward call to look at Paul in his life and to let that be an example and motivator for you as he imitated Jesus. And I hope that you have a great day. God bless you.